tapping into the true potential of the human spirit. This is Humanity Empowered. This is The Implicit Show. Hello, hello, and welcome to The Implicit Show. I'm your host today, Brendan Bay, and in today's episode, guys, really pumped about it because today you're going to learn the difference between the master and the dabbler. Um, and I'll tell you, I've done so much research into this project or into this topic as I was completing a project. I wrote a book on this and, um, not only have I researched it extensively, but also have my own personal experience with mastery. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to you guys about that today. Uh, also you're going to learn not only the difference between the master and the dabbler, but you're also going to learn how to commit to mastery. Right, because we live in a society today where most people are dabblers, right? We're always looking for the next fun, cool, shiny object, new cool thing to, to go after. And then we forget about mastery. We forget about choosing something and really becoming a master of that and going all in. So that's kind of what I want to talk about today. And this is all based on um, a book I wrote. Um, hi, Rachel. Good to see you in the comments. If you guys are in the comment section right now, make sure you say hello. Let me know where you're from. I love to, to connect with you guys and chat because, you know, this is a conversation. This isn't just me, you know, blabbing about this stuff. I want to start a conversation on mastery. So. Um, before we go any further, I just want to let you know that I appreciate you guys tuning in. I always appreciate you guys tuning in. I love doing this. This is like my favorite thing to do of the week. Um, we do the show five days a week, Monday to Friday. We do the implicit show. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, we got Rachel in from Virginia beach. Hmm. That's cool. Virginia beach, Virginia. Never been myself. Anyways. Um, so yeah, like I said, you're going to learn the difference between the master and the dabbler. And, um, you know, part of my expertise in this area really comes from my vulnerability in this area because, um, for a big chunk of my life, I really had that shiny object syndrome. Um, and by that shiny object syndrome, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm all in on, on one thing and then I choose the next thing and then I go over here and then something else cool says, and there's all these opportunities, right? Like think about it. If you log into the internet today, if you log into your Facebook or your YouTube or your Twitch or whatever you're into, um, there's always information being just flooded at you. Am I right? Like there's constant information all the time. And, and what happens for us a lot of the times is we let this information distract us. But look, if you let this kind of information distract you, this nonstop constantly coming at us information, then you're going to end up lost lost in all the all the information out there and you'll never really find that thing that you can master that mastery that you're really looking for um and i think you deserve that seriously because i think i mean we all deserve to achieve a level of mastery whether it be mastery in your health mastery in your relationships mastery in a skill that you want maybe you know you want to master a musical instrument you want to master the guitar you want to master the the violin wherever it is no it's over here the violin maybe you want to master the bass maybe you want to master art if you want to master being a doctor, being a lawyer, being a family person, whatever it is in your life, you need to commit to mastery. And the thing with so many people is today, and I know this is, you know, before I start pointing figures, let me point the figure at myself. Okay. Um, I grew up and, you know, I grew up in your typical dysfunctional family. We didn't really, we didn't really connect a lot on an, on an emotional level. So I spent a lot of my time just diving into things, diving into distraction. I mean, I dive into my Legos, I dive into um, <laughs> my guitar. I mean, eventually I found music and that was the one thing that I really wanted to master was music because music for me was so beautiful. Like I saw how music could change people's states. I saw how music could take somebody from being completely upset and depressed to being overwhelmingly happy. It was just this night and day change that music can make. And so, um, for a couple of years, I dove into music and I wanted to master it. I wanted this music thing to become my mastery. And, um, I mean, it's, it's funny how mastery works too. Cause you know, you discover something like for me, myself personally, I discovered music and I was so into it for a couple months, maybe a year. And, um, after that, it just got boring after that, you know, I reached a certain plateau and I was just like, well, you know, like this has been fun, but, uh, what else can I do? Right. And then I started picking up video games. I just got really into these video games. I started mastering all these games, Call of Duty, <laughs> Gears of War, Fallout. I started mastering all these video games and becoming really talented at it. Um, 
but you know, it was fun for a couple months, a year, a couple years. And then I was bored. I was bored of the video games. And what did I go on to after the video games? Hockey, right? I discovered hockey. I, I, I wanted to be, I saw the NHL. I wanted to be a hockey player. I was so pumped about it. I was outside um, in front of my house, in front of the driveway, just constantly all day practicing practicing how to become a better hockey player practicing how to get that shot in and i never played on a team or anything but you know i just had this overwhelming like need this desire to master it and you know i just wanted it so bad and um so i did that for a while you know i got really into hockey um and then you know year goes by and i was bored and then what you know i pick up my skateboard i was like hey this skateboard thing is pretty fun this is really cool and i went all in i was watching all these videos i was immersing myself in this environment of skateboarding um i was hanging out with skateboarders i was going to the skate park i was just you know i was trying to become a skater that was my thing um and you know it, it was good for a couple months and then i got bored and this is the dabbler mentality the dabbler mentality says you know i'm gonna do something it's new, it's fun, it's exciting, I'm into it, it's so cool, like, ah, oh, this is awesome. But then, as soon as a challenge hits, as soon as it gets a little stale, as soon as it gets a little boring, we go on to the next thing, because the next thing's even funner. The next thing, and I know Andrew's gonna get mad at me for this, because I know funner's not a word, but I like that word. You know, we're always looking for the next funner thing, the funnest thing we could find. And um, that's why nobody could, that's why a lot of people don't commit to mastery. That's why a lot of people, are dissatisfied with their job, their their relationships, their health, their, all these things because you know they're in, into it, they're excited for a little bit, but then they get bored. Let me give you another example. <laughs> let me give you another example. Andrea is totally pissing me for saying funner, but anyways, let me give you another example of dabbling and being the dabbler rather than committing to mastery. Um, and this is a an example of me in my personal life, like right now. Like I wrote a book on mastery, and I still struggle with it. I'm still every single day doing the best I can to achieve my mastery, to achieve the mastery that matters for me. And one of the areas that I've been, you know, on and off dabbling in and I'm ready to commit now to mastery was waking up in the morning and, and committing to a success ritual. What I mean by that is you wake up at a certain time every day and you follow a certain routine. For me personally, I wake up and I do yoga first thing. That's Yoga for me is just beautiful. It gets me in the proper state. It's, it stretches my body. Everything feels great. I do a little exercise and then I do some meditation. And then after my meditation, I, um, I read some affirmations and I read my goals out and I get focused, right? But for months, for years, I've been trying to commit to this ritual, but I haven't been able to make it happen. And that's, it's funny because what happens is I'll, go, I'll get really excited about it. We'll talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. I'll get so pumped and excited about it. And then what happens is as soon as, you know, a couple days go by and the excitement of, of, of this ritual wears off, I give up, I fold because the excitement's not there anymore because the newness, the, the funness is not there anymore. And I know these aren't words, Andrea, but I'm, I'm saying this because um, it's just my personal experience. I've had so much experience with this where it's like I get so excited and so pumped about something, the guitar, the, the ritual, the skateboard, the hockey, whatever it is, and then I'm into it for a little bit, a month, maybe a, two months, and then I just fold and then I give up and I quit because it gets boring or it gets difficult or I don't see the result fast enough or you know I don't believe that I could make it any much any further. And so that's the dabbler mentality. The dabbler mentality says, you know, I'm experimenting. Right. The dabbler mentality says, no, I'm just going to experiment with this, experiment with that. Try this, try that. Do go here, go there, do this, do that. And I'm not really going to stick to anything until I find something that really sticks to me, you know? And that's the, that's the thing is in my personal experience, I haven't found anything that really sticks to me. I haven't found anything that, you know, no matter what I have to do it all the time. Um, and, and, you know, the first time I try it, it's just becomes an automatic habit because you have to build habits. Right? Habits don't just happen. Habits don't just come out of nowhere. You have to work at the habits. You have to build the habits. And so we talked about the dabbler mentality, which is really, you know, the shiny object syndrome. You're looking for the next cool thing um, to do. It's the next fun thing, the next exciting thing. Um, and then you quit and you move on. Well, the master mentality is much different. The master mentality says, I don't care how boring it gets. I don't care how mundane, I don't care if I'm doing the same thing, the same action every single day, I'm going to do it because that's how mastery is created. That's how habits are created. That's how it's done. Now, I want to acknowledge some of you guys in the comments here. We've got Andrea here. Um, 
she actually edited the book that I wrote motivate or achieving mastery. And, uh, she's a great editor. I mean, if it weren't for her, there'd be all sorts of made up words in my book. I'm sure. Um, Rachel's in here. Bears is in here. Julie's in here. If you're in here, Alyssa's in here. Awesome. If you're in here, let me know where you're from. Um, let me know if you have any questions because like, it's, it's just me and you. It's me and you. That's it. There's nobody, no guest here. Nobody else It's just me and you. So if you got any questions, let me know. Um, anyways, when it comes to mastery, um, so the master sticks to one thing. The master chooses one thing. And you know where I really got this idea. Um, I mean, I've done so much research into this guys. This is, this is my passion in life. Like to me, I want to master mastery. I want to master the ability to build skill. I want to master the ability to learn. I want to master the ability to act, the ability to produce results. These are the kind of things that I want to master. Um, and so on a day to day basis, I, I, I consciously do everything I can to create, to implement habits that will commit me to mastery, to implement even small little things like making your bed in the morning, right? What's fun, new and exciting about making your bed in the morning? <laughs> Nothing, right? Nothing at all. Um, <laughs> but the thing about it is, you know, it develops a habit. It develops a level of discipline. It develops a level of consistency that seeps into the other areas of your life. I mean, the, part of my affirmations that I read every day, there's this thing that I read. I believe it's a T. Harv Ecker quote. And he says, how you do something is how you do everything. How you do something is how you do everything. It's how you do anything. And so, you know, if you're going to slack off on making your bed, and you're gonna let yourself go on making your bed, you're gonna let yourself go in your health, you're gonna let yourself go in your relationships, in your career, whatever it is. If you let yourself go in that area, odds are you could let yourself go in all the other areas of your life. And that's why mastery, I mean, in this book, Achieving Mastery, we tackle one area of mastery, which is really, you know, pick your one thing, pick your one skill, pick your one mission in life, your purpose, your value, and then develop a habit every single day that puts you in a state to make that happen put develop a habit every single day that actually propels you to achieving whatever it is you want to do to achieving your level of mastery and over the next 12 months um part of my mastery part of my challenge is i'm writing a new book every single month on mastery and it's about mastering a different topic topic of your life and the first month obviously has to be about achieving mastery itself what is mastery right how do you achieve it? What stops people from achieving mastery, right? What are some tips, strategies, tools, habits, things that I could do right now to bring myself closer to mastery? And next month, it's all about motivation, right? How do you keep yourself motivated? You know, because that's what the master does. The master motivates himself. The master motivates herself. And, you know, she, she pushes through even when there is no motivation. She creates the motivation. You know, that's what the master does. And so... The next month's all about master. Um, it's all about motivation. And then after that, it's all about mindset. And that's all about your emotions. And then we talk about morning rituals and evening rituals. And we talk about your mission in life. And we talk about time management, social life, your health, um, your wealth, um, all these areas of life that you should really think of as a big you know, a circle, a wheel of, of, of mastery. Cause you know, if you just master one area of your life, say, you know, you master the art of finances, you're a millionaire. No, you're a billionaire. Okay. But you have no true friends. You have no real friends. You have no intimate relationships. You have no family, right? Your health is, is terrible. You feel like shit all day, every day. What kind of life is that really, you know? And so my philosophy on mastery is really attacking it at every angle, every area of your life, you know, deciding first off what matters to you most. And so when it comes to the master versus the dabbler, the master knows himself. The master knows herself. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they know exactly what it is that they want. They know exactly what it is, why they want it. They know exactly what it is when they want it by. There's so much clarity that goes into um, this master mentality. Um, and so that's something that I want to challenge you to do right now in this episode, you know, and actually why not do it in the comics that in the comment section as we speak, we got Debbie in here, bears, you guys being super active in the comments. Let me know if you work to master one thing, what would it be? Just one, your one area of your life. And it, and if you were to master that one area of your life, it would seep into all the other areas of your life, overall, making everything exciting, making everything better, or maybe it's your health. Right, because if you master your health, 
Think of all the energy that you're going to have to put towards the other areas of your life, the other things you want to master, right? That's the beautiful thing about health. If you master health, you can take that, that energy into your work. You can take that energy into your relationships, into your family. You can take that energy into your spirituality, uh, into your community, into the contributions you have in the world. Maybe it's health for you. Maybe for you, it's, um, it's just you know, developing a, a sense of purpose in your life. You just want to master the idea um, of being on purpose, of having a mission, you know, discovering what it is. You know, for me, as an example, maybe for me, it's music. And and I really want to develop the habit of every single day working on my music, every day putting my music out there, every single day making sure that my music reaches people and that it's affecting people and that I'm creating change with my music. I'm, I'm fulfilling my purpose. Whatever it is for you, choose that one thing you want to master. And we're going to get into the comment sections here. Um, so Rachel, she says, how do I get back into doing the Miracle Morning again after she fell off? So that's... That's a great question, uh, Rachel, because that's something that I've, I've already touched on a little bit that I've, I've had trouble with myself is, make, is waking up at the same time every day and implementing a success ritual, a miracle morning, a morning ritual, whatever you want to call it. You're implementing something, whereas every day consistently you wake up at the same time, you develop a discipline, you develop a habit, you add, you know, you add things to it, maybe exercise, maybe yoga, maybe meditation, maybe writing, maybe reading, something that you could do that brings you close to your goals. You do that every single morning. And the reason you probably fell off, Rachel, is because you were dabbling, right? You were just, you were trying it out. You're saying, let me try this out, see how I feel, see how it works, and then I'll go from there. And that's the thing about dabbling is rarely, if ever, will you receive the results right away. Seriously, you will rarely get the results you want right away. It might take a week, it might take a month, it might take a year, it might take two years. But the master knows that I'm not waiting for the result. I'm in it every single day because I know that it's going to happen. And so if you want to really make this miracle morning, this morning ritual thing work for you, then you're really going to have to seriously ask yourself, why am I doing this? What am I trying to get out of this? How can I anticipate what could go wrong, right? Like what, what made me fall off in the past and how could I fix that, right? It's like constantly adjusting, constantly every single day measuring. You, even if you did like a, a one through 10, how do I feel? right? How do I feel when I first wake up one through 10? How do I feel after an hour, two hours, three hours? How do I feel after breakfast? All these things and really committing to mastery. Um, Rachel, if you want to get the book, send me a message because I'll, I'll get you the book for free so you could read through it and so that you could um, dive deeper into mastery, into achieving it for yourself. But I would say, you know, of the first part of achieving any kind of mastery is, is discovering who you really are what you really want and what you're really about and also narrowing down your focus, right? Because there's so many things that we could do. Like that's what the dabbler does. The dabbler sees all these amazing things that you could do. And the dabbler's like, wow, I could be a professional skateboarder, snowboarder, guitar player, musician, actor, dancer, lawyer, doctor, uh, politician, right? I could do everything. Um, and there is, as a result, you know, the dabbler becomes mediocre in each of these areas, you know, I'm okay at all these things, but I'm not a master at any of it, right? But if you narrow it down to like two, three, five tops, you know, I'm gonna master this, 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 and this, and that's it. And so for the rest of my life, right, you commit to it for life, for the rest of my life, these are the five things that matter. Okay, if, if I did these five things, if I mastered these five areas of my life, everything will work out fine for me. And maybe after you master those five, you can move on to the next one, but you should really narrow down your focus and, and focus on that. So send me a message, I'll get you the book. Okay, we got a question from Debbie. Hard question. I want to master lots of areas of health and self-confidence being the biggest. Okay, so self-confidence and health, they really do go together because I find once you work on your health and once you push through and, and once you discipline yourself, it's like you automatically get confidence. So I would say, you know, focus on your health and the confidence will come, right? I believe that confidence comes from putting in hard work. Right. Like when you've worked your ass off all day and the end of the day, you're just like, yes, you know, like that's confidence. But when you kind of just mosey around, you kind of just, you know, screw around, just take your time, just whatever, go with the flow. Um, that's when we lose our confidence because we don't feel like we're on top of our game. So really, um, if you want self-confidence, I'd, I'd, I'd urge you to challenge yourself every single day. Challenge yourself, because when you push through challenges, when you complete challenges, when you 
when you master the, 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 you know, just the art of you pushing through the art of you putting yourself into action, that's when you could seriously actually gain that confidence that you need. So, um, there's a 20 way, 21 day challenge in the achieving mastery. So make sure you message me too. I'll get you the book. Um, and there's a 21 day challenge and it is it, really simple. You know, you start really small, you start small, you build, you practice, you gain confidence. If you start failing, you know, you pull back a little bit, you, you, you make sure that every single step of the way you are completing it properly. You reward, reward yourself. Make sure you are constantly rewarding yourself for a job well done, because that's how we train our nervous system. That's how we train our brain to realize like, okay, this is something that I could do. Like if I do this, good things are going to happen to me, right? If I focus on my health, I'm going to feel good. If I focus on my health, I'm going to allow myself to, you know, whatever it is for you, find that reward that really matters. Um, Okay, Andrea, Andrea's got a question here. She's asking, procrastination is my biggest weakness. Mastering my time and energy and focus. Focus is huge and I'm terrible at it. Um, so Andrea, don't feel bad because um, I, I, I'm like this too. I get that kind of feeling as well. But um, when it comes to focus, I find for me personally, what happens is it's, it's like the master of the dabbler mentality, right? The master is only focused on so many things, right? The master has this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and it's clearly written down in absolute detail. You've got a schedule. You know exactly what you're going to do. Um, the dabbler is just not sure, right? The dabbler doesn't know whether or not, you know, I, I want, I really want to master this, or if I want to go there, or what if I want to do this, the master doesn't have their priority straight. And, and what happens is, or sorry, the dabbler doesn't have their priority straight. Um, the master does. And so if you really want to overcome this kind of procrastination, I think first off, it's, it's trimming things down. Like you might be focused on too many things. I know for me personally, the past two weeks, three weeks of my life, <laughs> maybe even a month, I've been trimming things down, um, both in, in material objects and both in like things that I want to do in my life, my goals and stuff. I mean, I had a goal page of probably like 50 to a hundred goals, legit. And I trimmed it down to 10. I've only got 10 goals, guys, 10 goals for this year and for my life. Like I honestly, I'm not even setting goals for the next 20, 30 years because I'm so focused on this year and mastering this year and mastering myself. And so, um, part of gaining focus is actually focusing, right? And, and what that comes down to is cutting out all kinds of distractions. So find out what's making you procrastinate. I know, um, for a lot of people, it's social media. You know what I mean? Like you ever catch yourself just like scrolling through the newsfeed for no reason and you're not, you're barely even reading what you're looking at. You're just kind of, it's a habit, you know, um, dabbling, um, losing focus, procrastinating, these things become a habit. And when it come, becomes a habit, you really have to go at it. Like with everything you've got, you need to make sure you destroy that habit. Maybe you delete the app off your phone, right? Maybe you eliminate all the, the dirty, greasy, gross foods out of your house so that the only thing you could eat is health. See right now I'm fasting. Um, I've never done it before, but I'm, I'm, I'm participating in a five, seven, 10 day. I'm not sure yet, but a minimum five day fast. And, um, as a result, you know, in order for me to actually commit to doing this, I had to eat all the food in my house. Like if you come to my house right now, I can't feed you. I don't have any food in my house because I cut out all the distractions so I could focus on exactly what I'm doing. I'm fasting. Right. And so when you eliminate the temptation, it's so much easier to focus because there's, there's no more temptation, um, after you. And so focus there's, I believe there's a whole topic. There's a whole paragraph in the book on focus. Um, I'm sure you've read it, Andrea. So it's just a matter of picking what it is. You really want to master picking what it is that actually matters to you and going all in on that. Um, because you can't have it all. You just, I hate to be that guy. I'm always that guy who says anything is possible. You could have whatever you want, but you can't have it all. I mean, realistically, you only have 24 hours in a day. So you got to spend those 24 hours wisely. Spend it on your purpose. Spend it on your passion. Don't spend it on distraction. That's the thing is, you know, we'll distract ourselves with social media, with food, with TV, with games, with whatever. And it's such a surface level. It's like a match. You know, you light the match. Ooh, it's, it's look, it's so pretty. It's pretty cool. And then the match goes out and the match dies and then you're screwed, right? And you got nothing left. And so the thing when you're following your purpose, when you're following your passion, when you're doing what it is that you, you want to master, when you're mastering something, 
it's not like a match. It's like a, it's like a freaking bonfire. It's just constantly going and going, going. You need to fuel that fire. And it doesn't, it leads. That's the thing about mastery guys is oftentimes it hurts in the moment. Oftentimes it sucks right now, but maybe in a month, maybe in a year, you'll get the reward. And the thing for so many people is they feel like if I don't see the reward right now, then why even go forward? Like why even try? I'm not seeing the results. It's like health guys. You can't work out for one day and then expect to be slim and fit and toned and ripped the next day. It just doesn't work that way. You can't even work out for a month and expect it. No, you need to develop a consistent strategy that automatically just hooks you in, right? Look, we all want to have fun, right? We all want to have pleasure. We all want to feel good, but sometimes mastery doesn't feel good right now, right? I forget who it was. I think it was Muhammad Ali who said, you know, I'll suffer in the gym now. I'll feel the pain. I'll, I'll suffer now and live the rest of my life as a champion, right? You need, and who <laughs> is Muhammad Ali a master or is he a freaking master? You know what I mean? It's like, that's the kind of mentality that goes into becoming the master. And for me personally, when doing my research, I did research into Muhammad Ali. I did research into Tony Robbins. I did research into like Michael Jordan and all these people who were like the best at what they do. And, I'm at, and I had to ask myself like, what kind of mentality goes into doing that? Cause you gotta be freaking crazy. You gotta be crazy to, to, sub, to subject yourself to pain and pain and pain and suffering um, just for some reward that you might see in the future, right? Like who knows, you could be in pain, 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 pain and never achieve your goal, right? But the master doesn't care about that. The master finds fulfillment in the day to day. The master finds fulfillment in, in putting in the work and making the sacrifices and taking the risks. Um, and so that's really what you gotta be willing to do, right? It's the thing is, do you just, do you just wanna feel good or do you really want to feel fulfilled? And there's a there's a huge difference there, guys, right? Like I could take cocaine and feel good for 30 seconds to a minute. But is it really going to fulfill me at a deep level? Is this going to be something that I'm proud of for the rest of my life? Is it going to be something that brings me lasting joy? Um, or is it just a surface level quick hit of pleasure, right? And so for so many people who get caught up in this dabbler trap, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for the quick hit. They're looking for the, you know, the quick fix. How could I feel good right now? What, what could I watch on TV? What could I open up on social media? What could I eat? Whatever I could do, what can I do right now to just feel good now? Um, and once you learn to overcome this, then you are the master. All right, so let's go into the comment section. We got 17 shares so far on this video. And uh, like I mentioned before, if you share this video, I'll give you a chance to win a free book. Um, now the book achieving mastery right now is available for free. So you could go pick it up, get the free ebook on amazon.com, but I'm actually offering, I'm going to send you like a, a copy, like an actual physical copy. I haven't had the books printed yet, but once I do, I want to send you a physical copy of this book so that you can have it. So Julie's got a comment here. She says, I believe fitness can help with focus and mastering every other part of your life and your entire well being." See, that is so true. That's why fitness and health, I think, is one of the more important areas of your life that you need to master. And like I mentioned earlier, you could have all the money, all the friends, everything in the world. But if you feel like shit all day, if your health is hurting, if, you, if you're too tired to, to even get out of bed, if you're, if you, you know, you can't get, you can't sit down and feel comfortable, then you're not truly, you know, in control of your life. It just doesn't matter. You know, it's just like, health is so important. And like Julie said, health can seep into all the other areas of your life because um, like I was telling Debbie earlier, you know, once you, once you take care of your health, it brings you confidence. It brings you self-esteem. It brings you momentum you know, and energy. Like when I started working out, I mean, I work out with Julie Ross. When I started working out with her, um, my energy shot through the roof. It was like, I was working full time in landscaping eight hours a day in the hot sun, lifting heavy things, just pushing myself to the absolute limits of what I believe was possible was possible for me. And then like, you know, I finished work at four 30 and I show up at five to Julie's, to Julie's place to work out, you know, I'd show up at the gym. And so, um, you know, you think, man, you worked all day in the sun. Like you're, you're beat up, you're tired, you're dirty. Like, what are you doing? Me, I was just so, I felt so much energy from working out. I just kept going. I kept going. I kept going. That's why I'm not eating right now. That's literally why I'm fasting. I'm fasting for energy. 
I'm fasting to detox my body. I'm fasting for health because that's an area of my life that's important to me that I believe like, look, if I can master my health, guys, I talk like a million freaking hours of money. I talk so fast because I'm so healthy and I'm just so pumped about life all the time because I've got that energy because I'm disciplined because I make it happen. Um, that's what matters. Uh, so boom. Okay. We got any other questions here in the comment section? We kick ass at the gym says, uh, Julie, and we do kick ass at the gym. You know, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do go to the gym. Um, but anyways, I'm going to wrap this up with just saying that, you know, be the master. <laughs> Don't be the dabbler because the dabbler, you know, you have fun in the moment. It's fun right now. It's pleasurable right now. It's new. It's exciting. It's shiny right now, but it never lasts, never lasts, right? It's like the difference between, uh, it's like the, in a relationship, right? you're dating somebody for the first time. You have that spark. It's like, everything's exciting. Everything's amazing. It's like, wow, like this is beautiful. This is so cool. I've got that spark, but it never lasts, right? It just doesn't last. And what happens after that initial excitement and newness and funness all wears out you you develop a new kind of fulfillment with that person maybe you get married maybe you've been together for decades and decades and you could talk to people who have been in a relationship a passionate relationship for that long and they'll tell you you know like it's so fulfilling it's not just pleasurable it's not just good it's not just like exciting and fun right now it's truly fulfilling we've been together for so long and it feels so good to have that trust and that connection with somebody that you love. And so you want to find that lasting joy, that lasting fulfillment, that lasting purpose um, over that instant gratification, that, you know, quick hit pleasure right now. Um, so for the next few days, I mean, the book's going to be free for the next week. So I really want to tackle as much of this book as I can give you guys video um, of, from the book. You know, I'm telling you guys stuff that I directly wrote in the book. So you can read the book, get way more details, but that's what I'm into right now. And um, tomorrow on the show, we've got a special guest. His name is Michael Valor. He's uh, he's about my age. He's 21, 22, 20, something like that. And um, he's making waves in, uh, in, in his industry. He's really learning to become the master at what he's doing. And so tomorrow we're going to talk to him. I believe we're going to talk about belief and, and, and faith and all those things that really go into to achieving mastery, right? Because if you don't believe it's possible for you, right, then you're never even going to try. And so I'm pumped about that, guys. Make sure you share this video. Again, if you share it, you're going to get a free freaking book. You might get a free book. Like I might sign a book and send it to you if you share this video. So <laughs> share with a friend, tag a friend in the comments, whatever you got to do to get some people into this, to help people realize this message that, you know, it's about that lasting fulfillment. It's about committing to mastery. It's about finding your purpose and going all in on that rather than just, you know, going for the quick hit. So, uh, that's all I got today. Make sure you go and, uh, do all those things I said earlier. <laughs> all right, guys, I love you. Be the master. Go for it. Go all in and do it now. <laughs>